Hello and welcome to Bristol Reptile and Porridge YouTube channel. I'm Gail and I'm Michelle and today we are going to talk about something that we get asked a lot in the shop. And what's that Michelle? We get asked quite a lot, have you ever been bitten? By a snake or? Well by anything. By really. anything right? But because I've got a snake in my hand today we're going to concentrate on snakes. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> so um Obviously the answer is yes, everybody's been bitten, they are animals, they have mouths, they will bite occasionally. Uh, so we're just going to talk about what happens, what you should do and sort of some other things to try and be aware of the snake's body language and try and work out, you know, you need to read them really, don't you? You need to understand your snake and understand its body language and its temperament and you're gonna the more you, that you handle them you get to know them you'll, you'll get to know them as individuals so that's kind of an overview of what we're going to do but let's go back to the beginning um what happens if you do get bit what should you do run around like a lunatic and scream <laughs> <laughs> or not <laughs> yeah don't do that okay we know i'm a wally that doesn't yeah. mean that everybody else should do as i as i advise no so basically depending on the type of bite that you get. And obviously we are talking about like non-venomous mm -hmm. constrictors. We're not talking about venomous snakes. It's completely different. You don't want to be watching us if you're dealing with venomous snakes. No. We Watch don't. somebody who deals with venomous snakes because it's completely different it's and different. that's not our area of speci speciality. So we are talking about non-venomous, primarily it's mostly constrictors that we we are we're dealing with. Yes. Um, but yes. Yeah, so this is what we're referring to. So the first and most important thing is not to panic. Okay. Because snakes are responsive to heart rate. Mm -hmm. So if it's a feeding bite, so the animal is hungry and is looking for food. If it's a big animal, your pulse rate will affect the reaction from it. Okay. So if something like this bites you, it's not the end of the world. No, nope. this is a children's python, by the way. Yeah, yeah, well done, girl. She's good at this. She, she's done it before. <laughs> so this is a children's python, um, and they might have a slight rep for being a bit cheeky and for giving a nip. Yeah. Um, but they, you know, they're relatively small, and it's not the end of the world. Obviously, the bigger the snake it is, the more problematic. And obviously you should be having safeguards with larger animals anyway, so that if something does go wrong, because they are wild animals they're mm -hmm. never going to be domesticated like cats and dogs you know yeah. doesn't matter how long we keep them we're not going to be able to change them and manipulate them like we do cats and dogs so we need to respect them and we need to be looking out for signs of things that can go wrong mm -hmm. so with small stuff like this if it nips you it's not the end of the world is it no we're just waiting for it we're, we're being calm and relaxed we're waiting for it to release and then once it releases we can then go about processing the wound in a su suitable manner and obviously you would be looking at first aid anything beyond first aid for yourself you're going to see a medical professional yes he's being very well behaved he is being today. very well behaved today isn't he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we know what to do if a snake bites us um make you know keep calm and they eventually will let go what if they don't let go Definitely screaming right now. <laughs> Come on, I gotta get this right. <laughs> that will never be the answer. <laughs> Damn. I've only been doing this like 15 years. <laughs> right, okay, so if it doesn't let go, it's going to have to let go at some point, okay? But if it doesn't let go pretty quickly, mm -hmm. there are certain techniques that different people will use. Now, some of those techniques will backfire and the animal will just go, and bite down a little bit harder and that little tear is going to appear in the corner of your eye and you've just got to suck it up buttercup and crack on with it right okay so it is just a time thing so especially if it's a big animal sit down lower your heart rate by going i'm okay it's fine and just let the animal naturally release okay be prepared for when it does release have other people around you so that you can help, they can help at that point and take the animal away from you so that you can process the injury that you may or may not have, you know, obtained. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all just about being relaxed, calm and taking it all in your stride and fingers crossed, everything will be okay. Right. Worst case scenario, if it's major, major issue, obviously the person that's with you should be phoning the ambulance straight away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So preventive measures then. 
What do we need to look out for to try and uh, avoid a snake bite? If you never want to be bitten by a snake, don't own a snake. It's <laughs> the best I can come up with. <laughs> It's not true. There are a few things that you can do. <laughs> it's bloody language. Okay. Sorry, I got it by me. <laughs> so it's all about body language. Oh, there he goes. He's off. Um, so we should be observing the body language of the animal to work out what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So normally, it's very rare for a snake just to nuzzle up to you and bite you. Occasionally, it happens. Occasionally, okay? So there are times when we're just like, stuff happens out of the blue, something spooks them, we might not be aware of it, and they will just give you a little nip. Yeah. But normally, there is a heads up. So we're looking for a change in body language or, you know, something that indicates to us that that snake's gonna react in a different manner to what we would like. Because mm -hmm. nobody wants to be bitten. If they no. do, they've got something <laughs> wrong. You know? So we're looking for muscle tension. A snake that is very taut and you can actively see the tension in its body mm -hmm. indicates that it's probably going to do something that you don't want it to do. Okay, so that's something, that's our first heads up. Also, in the case of a strike, opposed to a little nuzzle where they nuzzle into you and just give you a little nip, they need forward motion. So we have to be able to draw the body back in order to spring forward. So we're looking for an S shape in the first third to two thirds of the body. Mm -hmm. So if they really mean it and you know they really want to spring at you, they'll use as much of their body as possible to spring and propel forward because they've only got that mouth to work with. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in a big snake, that could be quite a lot of weight that's coming at you. Certainly could be. And sometimes with a snake bite, it's not necessarily the teeth that causes the injury. It's the bruising of the impact. Mm -hmm. Because, and as I say, anything over about six foot, as the mouths get bigger, the impacts get harder. All right, okay. So it's, that's the other thing that's going to happen. And some snakes are really helpful because they produce loads of saliva. And all that saliva helps your blood to run out of the... Um, of the teeth puncture marks a bit faster so that you know it's all part of their mechanisms how they've evolved to be good at what they're good at which is obtaining food hunting basically yeah, yeah. so if you want to avoid being bitten if you see any of that body language and we're going to try and run some clips over of snakes showing this body language so yeah. that you guys get a bit of a heads up um then it gives you the idea before you even start do I want to be putting myself in that position? Yeah. You know, should I be using something else to protect myself? Whether that's a snake hook, if you know how to use one and you've 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 got one to hand, mm -hmm. or whether it's a, even just something like a pair of gardening gloves. You know, I know loads of people get slated online when they put on a pair of gardening gloves. If it makes a difference between you being bitten or not, put a pair of gardening gloves on. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with it. If it makes you feel more comfortable to be able to handle the snake to start off with, that's another good way to do it as well, isn't it? Confidence is key. I'm Absolutely. really pleased that girls pop that word in for me because if you're confident, the snake will respond to that. Yeah. If you're edgy and nervous, the snake's going to go, I got this one. All I've got to do is a little nip and they'll leave me alone. <laughs> They're not naturally aggressive animals. They're not doing it to hurt you. They're just trying to you know, uh, assert their authority, aren't they? Well, it's normally things like fear, isn't it? Fear, yeah, that's it. You know, if you're frightened of a situation and you can't move away from the situation, then you'll defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what the snake's doing. Absolutely. Unless it's confused about food, you know? If your hand's in the way when it thinks it's food, you're going to cop for it. And that's not the snake's fault. <laughs> no, it's not. That's why we use feeding tongs. <laughs> Girl's laughing because it's happened. Yes. So, you know, we've all had a snake attached to us yes. when the pinky or the mouse is at the other end of the tongs. <laughs> you're safer with tongs. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So with most snakes and yourself as a, as a snake owner, you've got to get to know them and they've got to get to know you. So um, the baby corn snakes, I quite often get bit by because they're just defending themselves, aren't they? They just sort of like, oh, I don't know who you are and, and snap out. It doesn't hurt at all. It's more of a shock than anything. So it's just to be aware that 
they are learning the same as what you are learning. So a few things that you can do when you go to pick a snake up from an enclosure. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, I mean, what, what girls highlighted though is a really key point. So snakes at different life stages react differently. So if it's a young snake, it's not gonna have the life experience as an adult snake. If it's an adult snake and it's going into, it's you know, say it's a female and she's got a clutch of eggs, she's probably gonna defend it. So she's gonna be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are things to bear in mind as well. Also, when they go into shed, that's something else to be mindful of. Very you know, important. what they're using to work out what's going on is impaired. Snake's vision isn't great at the best of times, but if you put a sheet of um, cloudy material over the top of it, it's even worse, mm. you know? So think about what process the snake is going through at the time you want to interact with it. And baby snakes is a prime thing. You can't fire into a baby snake in enclosure and expect it to behave as an adult mm. because they just don't have that life experience. And as I say, when you've got a very small snake, it's all about forward motion. So sometimes the easiest thing to do is to prevent that forward motion. So you can literally just cover the whole snake. If it can't move backwards, it can't move forwards. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you a little clip of this. We'll run it in the corner so that you can see it. And it's just a really helpful little way of making that snake feel confident and making it realise I don't need to defend myself because this isn't a threat. That's it. You have to make sure you're not a threat to them because that's when they feel uncomfortable as you would as a human or anybody would, as dogs and cats and everybody does, isn't it? Exactly, and the same principle applies when you're going into an older snake's environment. Snakes are territorial. They want to defend their snakes. At this snake, there's snakes. Oh, days, it's all going wrong. They want to defend their space. So if you're going into their space, let them know you're coming. You know, don't creep up on them because if somebody walked into my living room and I didn't know they were coming in, I'd have an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put their hide up and they're like, Ta -da! they're going to be like, oh my God, what's going on? So give them a heads up, give them a chance to work out what's going on. You know, it, they are very different. They process things differently to us. So we need to be aware of it. A snake is never going to learn human body language. It's nope. all down to us to learn the snake's body language. Absolutely. So we've spoken about what to do if a snake bites you, and that's mostly for a small animal. We're going to go over some ground rules that you perhaps should have in your home environment, especially if you've got um, larger snakes. So Michelle, can you talk us through some ground rules? Yeah, so obviously being bitten by a smaller snake, and even royals can fall into this parameter, is not very traumatic. It, you know, it's a first aid scenario. Most people can cope with it quite easily. But obviously we get to a point with some of the species where we cross over that threshold and then we have big constrictors, mm -hmm. heavy body snakes. So some of these snakes could weigh as much as either me or Gail quite comfortably. So obviously that's a bit different to work in with something like, um, you know, children's pythons and you know any of the smaller any, snakes yeah. to be honest there's there's loads in there there's there absolutely tons this is part of the reason why i have a blood python in my hands because at the moment this little one isn't a lot of hassle because it's quite small he is but when his body diameter is the same as my thigh <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot more power to deal with. It certainly is, yeah. And you need to know sort of what to do in emergencies and how to handle them. So the easiest thing to do is to have these conversations before any incident takes place. In, in an ideal world, you're never going to be bitten because you're always going to perceive things and deal with it appropriately. But when we keep big animals, it's better to be aware of it, have conversations, and then if anything does go wrong, it's easy to deal with. So in our house, we have a procedure. Mm -hmm. So we know, and when you throw a procedure in, a lot of people freak out and go, oh my God, what have we got to do? We've had a conversation basically. Yeah. So we keep big brummies. Mm -hmm. um, Very <laughs> <do>. big. <laughs> One of which is heavier than I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we basically have rules. So we do not work with the large snakes if we've had any alcohol. Yeah because obviously it impairs our judgment mm -hmm. and it also makes us bleed more if we get bitten. So that's our first ground rule. Yep. We also, neither of us works with the bigger snakes without the other one at least being in the house, yes. but also being aware that we intend to work with them. Now, to be honest, our Burmese are such a size that it makes our life so much easier working together. Yeah, they are very large. <laughs> and this just means that we can help each other if something goes wrong. 
our snakes are never going to outwardly try and kill us. No. They're never outwardly going to try and eat us. But sometimes they misinterpret what we're trying to do and we misinterpret what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And when we get bitten, they react if we get bitten, you know. Mm -hmm. So having the other person there, it just makes our lives a little bit easier. And with any larger snake, we would always advise this to be the case. And also, you know, if you have got snakes which you're, you, you're concerned about, maybe a bit nippy, only work with them when people are in the house and make sure those people are happy and comfortable and know what you want to, to happen if something goes wrong because it just means that life's a lot less stressful yes it is and you've got a happy owner a happy household and a happy animal thank you for watching bristol reptile emporium's youtube channel don't forget to subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next week for another video bye bye